right now. Say he is great. Close your eyes. Woo! He's a great God. Woo! He's a great God. He's a mighty. He's an awesome God. He's a great God. He is faithful to you. He said he'll never leave you or forsake you. Come on. He's a great God. is still great. God is still great. I'm just happy to be in church. I'm happy to be in church. I thank God that I can go to church. I got freedom. I got freedom. Freedom. Because you never say you're free. You're free to go to church. You're free to worship God. I was talking to one of our members on the phone this morning in Tacoma. He said their churches haven't opened back up yet. I was talking to our, 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 our USA Victory churches this week when they're at our meeting. They said their churches haven't opened back up yet around the country. They can't go to church. I was talking to some pastors here in Hawaii who haven't opened their churches back up yet. I don't know why. 
we have the freedom to. That's their business. That's not mine. It has nothing to do with me. But we're free. We're free. I can go to work. How many of you can go to work? Yeah. Amen. It's okay if you go to work, so, but you can't go to church. Something wrong with that one. You can, go to, you can go to Walmart, you can go to Walmart, you can go to Target, but you can't go to church. Something's wrong with that. I want my freedom back. I want my freedom back. I want my freedom back. Amen. Freedom reigns. Freedom reigns. Somebody say, tell them, say, tell your neighbor, say, freedom reigns. Freedom reigns. In this place. In this place. In this place, freedom reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is great. God is great. We serve a kingdom that never ends. Not going to change every four years. It's not going to change every four years. We're going on. And how many of you going on? I'm going on with Jesus. I'm going on with Jesus. We can get a little too caught up in the world. But we serve a king that you can't, you can't get him off the throne. Many have tried and failed. And it cost them their lives trying to overthrow this kingdom government that we serve in. Amen? Amen. Many have tried. Hitler tried to overthrow it. Russian dictators tried to overthrow it. They go. Amen. And Jesus is still reigning. Amen. Jesus is still reigning. And they're trying to overthrow him again today, but he will still his kingdom, to his kingdom, there is no end. No end. Hallelujah. Pastor Jacinta. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. I don't care what your week was been like. Hallelujah. Get ready for what God is going to do Hallelujah. next. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And even better, I was glad when they said we could go. And I went. Amen. Let's give God a shout out with our mask on. Come on. Give him a shout out like we're fans of the Lord. I am a fan of Jesus. And he always wins. And I always win. Come on, let me hear you. Jesus fans, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. You may be seated in the house. Thank you, Lord. We know that many of our internet listeners are, are not able to go into the house of the Lord. So we want to give them some spirit. We want them to be able to feel the spirit of the Lord. I need to come to church. I don't know about you. Did you need to come to church today? I needed to come to church. I needed to get my mind off of everything that we have our minds on. Amen. And I needed to be amongst the saints and the fellowship of the saints. So we welcome all of our internet listeners. We welcome you into the house of the Lord. And if you are here for the very first time, if you wouldn't mind standing, we have a gift for you. Uh, we'd love to give to you. We want to show our aloha to you. If you don't mind standing, yay! Woo! God bless you. Woo! God bless you. Good to see you. Great to have you. We're honored to have you. Our greeters are going to give you something for your family and you. And thank you so much. Thank you so kind. And we hope to meet you after service. And we want you to feel welcome. Amen. God bless you. I think that's, is that Cameron? I hope I got your name right. Is that right? Your two sons? Amen. You said you were going to bring them. It's good to have them. Give them a great big hand. God bless you. God bless you. So we have just a couple of announcements. Um, as far as our Thanksgiving pot blessing, we are going to go ahead and plan for that. I know we're waiting for the governor or whatever to decide what we're going to do, but we have plenty of room in here. Amen. And we're going to social distance and our kids will be able to jump on the trampoline. How many kids want to jump on the trampoline for free? <laughs> Like any older people want to jump in the trampolines. It's still good exercise. That's what they tell me, but I'm not that adventurous. Amen. I'm a little older, so we have a pot blessing. Please sign up in the back. And we are going to do everything we need to do to keep it safe. And we have our pot blessing because many of us are transplants here. We don't have family members here. We have Ohana here, but we don't necessarily have family members. And it's just wonderful to fellowship. And let me in on a secret. Let you in on a secret. Our cooks are really good cooks. 
and so we throw down so this is you know if you want some real southern cooking uh, we have it and we have cooks that can do it for us they're not you know what are they fakes <laughs> they're the real thing so and then if you want some local food we have local food too amen God bless you. So sign up for our pot blessing. Uh, anyone can come. You don't have to be a member of our church. We would love to just have time with you and fellowship with you. And we usually sing some songs and worship and fellowship together. Amen. We want to let you know uh, after Thanksgiving on the Saturday after Thanksgiving from 10 to 1230, uh, Prayer Center of the Pacific is having another prayer watch again at the Kapiolani Park, Queen Kapiolani Park. Do you know we are in dire need of prayer? We've got to pray for this COVID thing to go away. We've got to pray for cancer and sickness and what's going on in our country. We need God to show himself strong on our behalf. Amen. We love seeing Brother Perry back in the house. Let's give him a great big hand. God bless you. I believe that's his daughter there. Sister Terry takes such good you know, God is good. He was in ICU and prayer works. Amen. And so we do have others that need prayer. Amen. That's his God. Yes, his God. Amen. Amen. He probably wants to testify. We'll ask Bishop if he can. He doesn't have to come all the way up. We just want you to share that God is good and prayer works. So whatever your challenge with, God can heal in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so we want to remind you uh, on that Saturday, 10 to 12, if you need more information, Bishop and I will be going out. I'm sure he'll be praying. Uh, one of the lead pastors praying as well. Okay, don't forget Thursday night Bible study. We have Facebook Live and we have a good time. We enjoy the word of God. And I wanted to let you know that our youth ministry is starting up. And I think we have enough youth, to the youth today so the minister Jason can go out with our youth and you can have your classes as well as our children's ministry if you'd like to do that. We have hand sanitizers. We have enough space so we can social distance. Aren't we blessed? We are very blessed. Amen. We may not be huge, but we're blessed that we have a comfortable facility that we can worship and our children can be in. So I had just a couple other announcements, last announcements. Do any of you like this little tambourine? Amen. I bought this from the Hawaii Christian Outlet. And it is a bookstore, a new bookstore here on the island. Uh, it's only about 10 minutes from here, if that, on Waipahu Depot. And they sell books. They sell shirts, as you can see. Thank you, Miley, for the, the visual presentation. Bibles. Some of us need some other Bibles and translation. So it's a wonderful couple, Bishop Bethia and Dr. Melrose Bethia. And they own this store. They opened up this year. Of course, they had to close down because of COVID. But it is a Christian bookstore, and we want to support them. So just go on, put it in your GPS. Bishop and I have been there. It's just a beautiful place. And if you just need some place like a library to sit and read, this is the place to go. And I want, and we want to support a small business on the island. Let's give our small businesses a hand. Amen. And we want to mention uh, Brother Mike. He doesn't push this, but he has a detailing service right outside. And we want to support him. Give him a great big hand. God bless you. They do a good job. Thank you for cleaning our cars and our vans. He keeps them up so nice. And I believe you're also located at Pearl Harbor. Is that correct? at the exchange, amen. So go on out and support him. These are Christian people and he's very generous to our church, always uh, bringing something. And last year he brought some wonderful pies for us, I believe. And so what a blessing, give him a great big hand and let's encourage him in the Lord, amen. And don't forget our trampoline park, that's ours too. And uh, so don't forget to support this. Tell your friends that the trampoline park is open and we maintain social distancing. Amen. God bless you. Are you glad to be in the house? I can't hear you. Do I have any Jesus fans in the house? Woo! Woo! Yes! Come on. Let... I got my tambourine now. Woo! I'm a cheerleader for the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning, PRC. How's everybody doing this morning? Okay. All right. All right. 
Good morning, PRC. How's everybody doing this morning? Awesome. You are not praising me. You are not praising the church, but you are praising God. Just remember that. How many joyful and cheerful givers do we have in the house this morning? Yes, for God said that he loves a cheerful and joyous giver. Yes. So if you have your Bibles, if you could please turn me quickly. Hmm. If you could please turn me quickly to John chapter 12 and verse number 24. I'm reading out the New King James Version. Here in John 12, 24, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. I love that scripture because <laughs> there's, there's many applications there. Of course, I know Jesus was talking about that he must die so that many <laughs> will live. And that's you and I today. But we also know in Malachi chapter 3 and 10, it says that God says to bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And he goes on to say, try me now in this and see if I will open for you. Again, open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Now, I love how 2 Corinthians 9 and 10 reads in Amplified Classic. And it says, in God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of righteousness which manifests itself in active goodness kindness and charity now i know the scripture talks about in isaiah 55 that for as the rain and snow comes down from the heavens and do not return there again but water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. I don't know about you, but I've never seen rain come down and I've never seen it go back up. <laughs> I've never seen snow come down and it go back up. <laughs> How much more when we sow into the kingdom of God, will God, the very earth that he planted, will it reject the seed? The earth must receive the seed. Likewise, the seed that God has given us, he's given us to sow into his kingdom. God says to try me now in this and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. The thing I love about that is that we don't have to eat our seed. I know sometimes we have challenges. I know sometimes that we're hungry. I know that we have a need, but it is God. He is the one that's supplying it. So just think about it like this. When we sow our seed into the kingdom of God, while the seed is sowing, God has prepared a meal for you. Again, he has given you bread to eat. You ever been so hungry when you're cooking and after you're done, you taste everything and then everyone else is ready to eat, but you're not ready to eat <laughs> because you done tasted everything. You had a little of this and a little of that. It's likewise with the kingdom of God. During the cooking process, I'm eating, I'm tasting. I'm no longer hungry. I'm satisfied. You will be satisfied so as long as you sow into the kingdom of God. Again, trust that God is giving you the supply when the seed is growing. You got it? <laughs> it's amazing. The natural, and we see it, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen by the things that are made. God has given us every season in our life. And you notice every season in our life, there's different vegetables that grow, different fruits that grow, that there is something for us to eat in each and every season. There's always supply for you in God's house. I encourage you to sow into PRC. We have a lot of wonderful things here. God has given us a great vision here, which you will see just shortly. Just go ahead and sow. I know that God has given us great leadership here. And I know <laughs> that, hey, because of some things that they have done, I am here today. They sold into Yellow Pages before, but it's not that no more. <laughs> now it's, you know, <laughs> what is it? Uh, Facebook and um, I, I, I don't have social media, so forgive me. <laughs> but you guys understand what I'm saying. But you guys have been touched by some form of this media and this outreach that we have sown. So today I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to say a blessing. And after I'm done, I'm going to ask you to please stand and say the vision statement with me. 
The vision statement will be up here on the board. You can just read it along with me, but I'm asking you, get it in your heart that you may run with it. And when you're tired, read it again and get refreshed in the word of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name for giving us an opportunity to tithe and to give and to sow into your kingdom this day. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name that while the seed is growing, Father, I thank you that you have given us bread to eat, Father, during the process. We know that it shall come up, it shall multiply, Father. It does not return to you, void in Jesus' name. The rain does not return, the snow does not return. Your word does not return, boy. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, we know that the windows of heaven shall be opened up for each and every one of us to provide the blessing, Father, that you have already determined, that you are so specific, Father, it's exactly what we need. It is always on time. We thank you for the vision being supported in this house. I ask you, Father, to all of us, within the hearing of our ears, become partakers of the vision in this house. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So please stand and let us say the vision statement. All together now, God has given Pacific Revival Center a mandate to train and equip and to send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. He has anointed and qualified us to preach the good news, to bind up and to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives, and to open the prison doors and eyes of those who are bound. He has sent us to comfort all who mourn, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And we shall be called priests of the Lord, and shall be named ministers of our God, and our descendants shall be known among the nations, and our offspring among the people, and all who see them shall know that we are a people whom the Lord has blessed. Please follow the directions of the ushers. Thank you. He's been saving from he's been saving for thousands of years. He has not just started saving people. The saving grace of God is still powerfully at work in the earth. Amen. Come on, let's do our confession statement. Come on, say it's my time. It's my time, it's my time for salvation. It's my time for, salvation. It's my time for healing. It's my time. it's my time for blessing. It's my time for change. No weapon can stop me. No weapon can prosper. I'm superior to the forces of darkness. It's my appointed time. It's my set time. It's manifestation time. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house today. I want to thank all of our visitors for coming out today. Thank you for attending our church. You could have went anywhere. You know, we have church in the United States like we have McDonald's. Amen. Everywhere, every corner you turn to, there's a church. There's a church. And for you to grace us with your presence is a blessing to us. And we thank you for coming out. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, just be patient with me. My iPad was acting up. It's time for me to get a new one. My daughter looked at it. She said, you done dropped it, cracked it. The, the, the uh, home button don't work no more. <laughs> right? You know, I have to swipe everything now to get it to move around. Everything, right? But I'm, I like to use stuff until it just quit. Amen. <laughs> it just quit. The screen's cracked and all that, but it's still working. <laughs> Amen. I think I'm going to have to get me another one now. Amen. I want to talk to you today about the power of prayer. Prayer works. Tell somebody prayer works. I am so glad that we have the power of prayer and the pr power of prayer is at work in our lives. Jesus is at work. Jesus is still on the throne. Whether you know it or not, he is not going anywhere. He's still on the throne today. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to God. You, you, might, you might as well get used to that. Everything belongs to God. Hallelujah. Everything belongs to God. Let me ask you a question. How powerful is your prayer life? The power of, of power of prayer, how powerful is it? Just how powerful is prayer? The power of prayer should not be underestimated. James chapter 5, verse 16 through 18 declares that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Powerful and effective. What well, well, Pastor, why did I pray and what I asked for didn't happen? We're going to talk about that today, amen? Why did what I wanted to happen did not happen, amen? We're going to talk about that. The Bible says Elijah, James says it this way, he says Elijah was a just man 
Elijah was a man just like me and you, just like us. And he prayed earnestly. Get that, get that now. How do you pray? How do you pray? He prayed earnestly. Some of us, some of us don't even pray for our food anymore, do we? You know, we trust the FDA. <laughs> Amen. We trust the FDA with our food. Amen. You know, some restaurants I go in when I was overseas, I, I say, I just do like the Bible says, just pray and eat it. Just pray, pray and eat it. That'll make you pray, man. That'll make you pray. I like, like my wife is ready for Thanksgiving. You know, when you come to eat Thanksgiving with us, you don't really, you, we want you to pray. We're going to pray over the meal, but our meal is going to be safe. And not only is our meal going to be safe, it's going to be good. Amen. The food is going to be taste good. See, there, there's, there's two, two reasons I, I, I judge food on. One has got to be safe. The other one has got to look good. Amen. It's got to look good. But, but, but it tastes good. No, 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 no. What does it look like? <laughs> what does it look like? You know, uh, 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 Brother Mike, when he brings food into us, and last year for Thanksgiving, he bought all. As a matter of fact, you don't really need to bring any crab, you know. No, we don't need that. We don't need that. We can bypass that. How many agreement with me? He, 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 has, he has some crabs shipped in. Where, where'd it come from? From Maryland, from Maryland. I said, man, we don't really need that. We don't really need that, you know. He gave my wife some. I said, we don't need that at home. I was trying to convince him. <laughs> but I let the fish in, right? We didn't need no fish. I ain't get no agreement. I ain't get no amens on that, huh? They could know he mass. We just needed some hamburger, some chicken, <laughs> just the turkey breast. Don't need the rest of the turkey. <laughs> That's all we needed. Amen. But he bought all that other, they bring all that other food in. Now we do need, uh, we do need all those cakes. Where's Sister Daisy at? She's here somewhere. Her and Jason, they here somewhere. We do need them cakes, amen. That strawberry crunch cake, that's, that's pretty good, amen. I ain't got to pray for that because they're going to bring that, amen. I don't, have to, I don't have to spend my time saying, I pray that this Thanksgiving dinner is going to be good. It's going to be good, amen. It's going to be good because there's going to be enough food there that I'll be able to make a choice. It's, such a, it's just a blessing that we live in the United States and we have choices, we have choices, but look at somebody's tell them, say, don't abuse your choice. Don't abuse your choice. Let me get back to the message. Uh, Elijah prayed earnestly, earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. I, I had to put a little note with that. Think about that. We always, we always focus on Elijah praying earnestly for it, to rain, to rain, but he had to pray just as earnestly for it not to rain. Get that now. For it not to rain as he did for it to rain, as he did for it to rain. Elijah just popped up on the scene. I want you to get this. Elijah just popped up on the scene. If you read it in verse, chapter Kings, verse, uh, uh, f first Kings, chapter, uh, verse, uh, eight, 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 chapter 18. And he starts out and he says in chapter 16, he just pops up on the scene out of nowhere and, and goes to the king and tells the king, by my word, as the Lord liveth, by my word, it's not going to rain until I say so. Until I say so, it's not going to rain. That, you know what? That, he was risking his life right then. Because he was talking to a super, you ever talk to superstitious people? You ever met someone that's really superstitious? This was a superstitious nation at the time. They were worshiping all kind of other gods. They were sacrificing their children to other gods. To the, to the god Molech. And now you come to a superstitious man and say, the Lord said, by my word, until I say it, it's not going to rain. You know what the, the king's thought was? You won't be speaking anymore. We're we going we gonna to shut your words down right now. And you're not going to be able to speak another word tomorrow. I'm going to take care of you. And then Elijah disappears for three and a half years. Three and a half years he disappears. And then he shows up again. And he shows up to one of the king's orderlies and tells the king's orderlies, go tell your king I'm ready to speak. 
Isn't that powerful? Go tell the king I'm ready to speak. And the king's oily said, wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't play with me. You're trying to get me killed. I'll go tell the king that you said you're ready to, to meet him on my come on. You don't show up. He's going to kill me. That's how superstitious they were, right? And it hasn't rained for three years. They're looking for water anywhere they can to water the horses, to anywhere they can to survive. And now Elijah shows up and says, it's going to rain. But I want you to get this. When he spoke the word that it's not going to rain, he had to earnestly pray that it was not going to rain. Amen? That it was not going to rain. Even though God told him it was not going to rain. But he said, but Elijah, it's dependent on your words. It's dependent on your words. I want to show you how powerful that is today. Amen? Again, he prays and the heaven gives rain. And the earth produces its crop. Get that now. God's most definitely listens to our prayers, answers our prayers, and moves in response to our prayers. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that? But I want to ask you, what do you think about the most? The reason I'm asking that is because whatever you think about the most is what you pray about the most. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking about most is what you pray about most. Elijah prayed boldly for God-sized miracles. Boldly for God-sized miracles. Elijah didn't mess around with small requests. Lord, what are we going to eat today? I pray that you provide me with something to eat today. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Look at somebody and say, stop praying for that. Wait a minute, brother. That's not right. No, yes, it is right. Jesus said, stop praying for that kind of stuff. Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm praying that I get this new car. Stop praying. Tell somebody, stop praying for that. Stop praying for that. Jesus says, take no thought. Jesus said, take no thought of what? What you're going to eat. What you're going to wear. Where you're going to live. Take no, don't earnestly pray for that. Earnestly pray for some kingdom things. Amen. For thy kingdom come. Earnestly pray for that, amen? Earnestly. Elijah went straight to the big request. Praying for a drought. How many of you would pray for a drought? That ain't God. I'm listening to people right now trying to tell us what's going to happen over the next three years. And I'm seeing some bad things might be going to get ready to happen over the next few years. Now don't, don't say that. Don't claim that. Hey, 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 that, might be, that just might be God's will, amen? How many of you know that God's will is judgment also? Or do you believe that? God's will is judgment also. God, Elijah went right to the great things. He prayed for a widow's son to be restored to life. Amen. He prayed and called fire down from heaven to consume an offering on Mount Carmel, right? Notice Elijah did not have to pray that. The, Elijah didn't have to spend a whole lot of time praying that the fire would come down. When you read the story, in 1 Kings chapter 18, he didn't spend a whole, he didn't spend hours upon hours praying that the fire would come down from heaven. He just spoke a word. He just spoke a couple of, a few, a few words and fire came down from heaven. All he did was gave glory to God. I want you to get that. All he did in front, of, he, he just had to give glory to God in front of the people. Look at that. So you want to see some things happen? Give glory to God in front of the people. Amen. The prophets of Baal spent all day long, get that, they spent all day long from morning till evening praying for fire to come down for their gods, the, the god, the goddess, god Baal, and uh, what's the other god's name? Ashtoreth and Baal, both those gods, to come down and consume the sacrifice. All day long they were cutting themselves, praying that the fire would come down all day long. And then Elijah says, okay, now it's my turn. It's my turn. And all Elijah did was say, all he said was, at the, it says, at the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. That's all he said. 
He didn't cut himself. He didn't throw sackcloth and ashes on himself. All he said was those few words and fire came down and consumed the sacrifice. All he did was gave glory to God. See, because Elijah was already ready. When he got to Mount Carmel, he had already prayed. And he prayed earnestly before he ever stepped foot on Mount Carmel. He was already ready for what God was going to do. Are you ready for what God's going to do? Are you ready? All Elijah did was pray, Lord, this is not my will, but thy will be done. This is not my will, but God, thy will be done. Get that now. Elijah didn't have to pray earnestly or fervently in front of the world because he did it in private. Because he did it in private. He didn't have to pray earnestly in front of the world because he was praying before he, he, he prayed before he went to work. He prayed before he left and went out before the people. Amen? How about you? Elijah says, answer me, Lord. Answer me, Lord, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back. Isn't that powerful? Answer me, God. And that's what Elijah's calling was to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Amen? Things had gotten so wicked that they were sacrificing their children and the Lord says, I'm going to send Elijah and he's going to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. We know John the Baptist had to come with that same mission to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Tells us in the book of Joel, the Lord says, unless he comes and smites the earth with a curse. I want to tell you today, if we don't turn our hearts back to our children, this curse of COVID-19 is not going in. It's not going to end. It's just going to be one after the other. One, one calamity after the other until we turn our hearts. Look at somebody say, turn your heart back to God. Amen? Back to God. Well, no, if you watch television, they'll say, this is going to be, COVID-19 is going to be taken care of by science. I want to tell you, COVID-19 is going to be taken care of by God. By God. Amen? The Bible says, and then the fire of the Lord fell. And burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil. It, it, it burned up everything. Everything. And also licked up the water in the trench. Yes, Elijah called down fire from heaven to consume the water and the sacrifices, not for his own glory, but so that others would know that Yahweh is God. And there's no other God in heaven or earth. God is God over heaven and earth. Amen. Elijah's prayers were about pointing the world back to God. Pointing, what are your prayers about? My, your daily needs, huh? Your daily needs. That's what our prayers are usually about, our daily. You know, Jesus told us how to pray for that already. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Give us our, this day our daily bread. Jesus taught us. He says, that's all you got to say, Lord, give me this day my daily bread. Give me, my, give me what I need today, amen. Elijah prayed fervently until he saw the answer. Look at somebody, you say, you got to see the answer. You got to see the answer. You got to speak it, and then you got to see it, amen. Elijah knew that sometimes an answer doesn't come immediately. How many of you know that? An answer doesn't come immediately. He knew that we must pray until we see the breakthrough. And he was committed. He was committed. We're committed. I, I, our leadership was meeting the other day, and I noticed that the, the heads of our organization, Dr. George and Pastor Hazel Hill, they're committed. I know of some things that's going on inside of the whole organization at Victory Churches International. And instead of them being concerned about that and those daily things that were going on when we were meeting last week, they're committed to how we're going to expand Victory Churches USA in the United States. Isn't that something? But wait a minute, but wait a minute. What about all the trouble that's going on? He said, you're always going to have some trouble. We're always going to have some trouble. But they're committed to what God wants to do next. Amen? Are you committed to what God wants to do next? He was committed for the long haul. How about you? Are you committed for the long haul? When Elijah spoke the word 
and said that it was going to rain again. Now, he spoke the word and said it wasn't. He earnestly prayed that it wasn't going to rain for three and a half years, and it didn't rain. And now he has to earnestly pray that it's going to rain. He spoke the word in front of, a congr- uh, in front of the people saying, it's gonna, tell the king, tell the king, get down off the mountain because I hear, get this now, I hear an abundance of rain. But it wasn't raining yet. The sky was clear. The sky was clear. And then Elijah goes, pr- he goes and prays and he prays seven times and he sends his servant, get his eye. He says, go look and see what, tell me what you see. And he said, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Amen? He's praying, and he's praying, and he's praying, and his servant comes back with a report. I don't see anything. I don't see any results of of your prayers. And he says, go pray. So he prays again. He prays again. He says, go look again. He comes back, I don't see anything. And he prays again. He comes back and he says, I see a cloud the size of a man's head hand. That don't sound like an abundance, does it? That doesn't sound like an abundance of rain. You're going to get all that water out of a cloud of a man's hand. And guess what? Elijah stops praying right then on the spot when he sees a cloud. Uh, 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 I want you to get that because that's prophetic right now, isn't it? He sees a cloud the size of a man's hand and he stops praying. He says, okay, I'm, I prayed enough. I prayed enough. Now I see what's getting ready to happen. I see what's coming. I see what's coming. I see God is getting ready to pour it out. My prayer has been answered. You know the Bible tells us despise not the day of small beginnings. For though your beginning is small, your end shall be great. Hallelujah. Somebody should praise the Lord on that one. See, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand and he stops praying right then. Okay, I don't have to pray anymore because my, the, my, the results of my prayer are on the way. They're on the way. Amen? But no, you're trying to wait till you see the whole picture before you get started. Amen? You're trying to wait till you see everything before you get started. He was committed. Jesus taught us. He says, I tell you the truth. Over in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small, if you can see a cloud as small as a man's hand, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move, and from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Isn't that powerful? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5 tells us that the weapons of our, we fight are not, with, are not the weapons of the world. Not the weapons of the world, but on the contrary, I'm reading out of the NIV Bible, on the contrary, they have a they have a divine power. The words we speak have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments. And every pretentious thing that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The Bible urges us and tells us to pray in the Spirit. To pray in the spirit on all occasions, the good occasions, the bad occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Keep on praying. Tell somebody keep on praying. Keep on praying. Tom said, keep on praying till you see the cloud the size of a man's hand. When you, look at somebody, tell them, say, when you can visualize it, then you can know that your prayer is getting answered, amen? When you can visualize it, then you will know that your prayer is getting answered. The power of prayer, how do I tap into it? That's my next question. How do we tap into the power of prayer? The power of prayer is not the result of the person praying. Look at somebody say, it ain't you. It ain't you. Don't get lifted. Some say, don't get it twisted. It ain't you. The power of prayer is not the result of the person praying. The power of prayer always, somebody say always, always resides in the object of our prayers. The power of prayer resides in the object of our prayers. That's why uh, uh, people that wor- worship false gods, 
they pray to statues because they think the statue has, has power. They think there's power in that cross that they wear. They think there's power in the money that they possess. The power of prayer always resides in the object of our prayers. Everyone prays to somebody. Everyone prays. Everyone makes requests and petitions to someone. The power of prayer resides in the God who is being prayed to. Who's your God? Who is your God? Some people would like to make the government their job, their God. Think of it like this. I'm going to give you a personal testimony here. You find yourself in trouble. You make the call home or to a friend, and you honestly ask them for help. They give you the help that you need, that you requested. And afterwards, you go out and do the same thing again. Have you ever did that? <laughs> and do the same thing again. Because you think that you can convince them again to have your back. I can convince them again to have my back. I, can, I don't have to change. I can do it again. You think you can convince them to have your back because of your convincing words. I can talk them, I can talk them into it. You get lifted. I talk them into getting me out of that. I can talk them into doing it again. Then you start thinking, my words have power. My words have the power is in my words but I want to tell you today the power is not in your words the power is in, the power wasn't in your words to, de to deliver you no it was not your words that had the power it was the one you asked for help that had the power amen it was the one you asked for help that had the power the only reason they helped you was because it was in agreement with their will. It was in agreement with their will. I'm in jail! Can you bail me out? Some of them tell you I ain't got the money. But some of you know, I know you got the money. I still ain't doing it. Why? I don't want to. It ain't in agreement with my will. <laughs> it ain't in agreement with my will. My brother used to get in trouble, was getting in trouble all this time, and me and my older brothers, we had kind of straightened ourselves out and well, we weren't getting in trouble no more. And my youngest brother, he was getting in trouble, and I remember I, just before I, I had came home and visited when I was in the Navy, and I came home, I said, why don't you come back with me? Actually, I was out of the Navy, I was in Hawaii at the time. And I've been out the Navy over here working. I said, why don't you come back to Hawaii with me because you're going to get back in trouble again. And he says, man, stay out of my business. He told me that. Stay out. He said, y'all need to just stay out of my business. Him and my sisters always trying to tell him, you, need, you, you got out of this trouble. And they told you next time you get in some more trouble, you, the minimum you're going to get is 10 years. He said, just stay out of my business. And he got in trouble again. And when he got in trouble, he was calling us. Can you help me? And we said, you know what? We never helped you before. We, we're going to help you. And my younger sister, who's close to they about a year apart, and she talked to his lawyer. She said, we're going to raise some money up, and we're going to, make it, we're going to get him out of make his bond and thing. But can you guarantee that he gets at least a couple of years? You, you said, stop praying for me. <laughs> Amen. And we said, why? We said, because he's almost 30, and we're hoping this will wake him up. This will wake him up. So that he'll stop doing these things, amen? And he said, y'all, he told me, I don't want y'all talking to my attorney no more. I don't want y'all talking to my attorney no more. And we got him out. Why, why did we do it? Because it was in our will to do it. It was, it, it was in agreement with our will. It wasn't, nothing, it wasn't nothing he had said or done. But it was in our will, amen? It was in our will. See, the only reason they helped you was because it was in agreement with their will. I can give you a personal testimony when I was in the Navy. How many, anybody here used to be in the Navy? Come on, somebody say, somebody. You're supposed to say, go Navy. <laughs> I didn't hear it. And, uh, and we, our ship was in Korea. And I was out hanging out one night and I missed the ship. The ship left without me. Now that's a big, that's a number one offense. 
you don't miss your movement. I missed the ship. Luckily, I had some friends that I met that was in the Marines. And we had been dropping them off on the beach. And I went, I had sense enough to go over there and talk to the gunny. And he said, Kelsey, don't turn yourself in because you're supposed to go turn yourself in. He said, don't do that. He said, because then they'll keep you here two or three months, right? Because you, you, they'll turn you into an all okay. How many familiar with the all okay? Republic of Korean Army, right? You know, them guys are rough. It's rough. You know, have you locked up in a place with no heat? <laughs> and he said, don't, he said, because they'll have you, just to see if you did anything up and down the coast. He says, we're going to put you on the manifest with us and fly you back to Okinawa where your ship is going to be at. And we'll put you on, 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 on a flight with us because we're going to leave next week. I beat my ship back to Okinawa. But when I got back, I still had to face the, uh, uh, face the, uh, what, what, what happened with my actions. I had to face that. And when I get my, I'm, I'm waiting to go to captain's mass. That's y'all call that Article 15 or whatever, captain's mass. And before you go to captain's mass in the Navy, you go to XO mass first. The XO makes the decision, the executive officer. And captain didn't like me. I knew I was in trouble. And everybody was asking me what happened. I wasn't, talk, wasn't talking, I wasn't talking, I wasn't saying, I kept my mouth shut. You know, the Bible says over the limitations, it says, humble yourself and be quiet. Amen. <laughs> I said, I kept my mouth shut and I was praying. I was praying the whole time. And I get up before the, before the XO and the XO looks at me and he reads off the charges and says, you miss ships moving. You know how serious that is? And he looks at me and he reads the charges off and he, throw, he balls the charges up and throws them in my face and says, get out of my office. And he dismissed it. He dismissed it. He didn't dismiss it because I got that. I'm, I'm going to talk to the XO. And I'm going to get to talk to him on the side and see if I can convince him to drop the charges before they get to the captain because the captain's going to burn me. I didn't do that. You know who did? My department head. The commander. I had a commander for a department head. Him and the, cap him and the XO had already got together and s said, if, if this gets up to the captain, uh, uh, paid officer first class Lewis is through. <laughs> is through. So we're not going to let it. They had already decided themselves before I said, I didn't say a word to either one of them. They had already decided what they were going to do with me, with my situation. They had already decided that they were going to dismiss it. They didn't tell me, we gonna, don't you worry about it, we're going to dismiss it. They had already decided. You know what I had to do? I had to keep myself humble and pray. I had to keep myself humble and pray. And that's what I did. I stayed humble and I prayed and I was thankful for what they did, amen? And they, it, it, it kind of turned me around. It changed, it, it changed the way I was going, the path I was going on down in, when I was in the Navy. And I remember my division officer saying to me one day, he said, and, and the XO said this to me one day, the executive officer on the ship, he said, Kelsey, many times I wanted to give you meritorious advancement. He said, but the problem is, you full sailor on the ship. He said, but when you lead a ship, you allowed to come back in handcuffs. You need to change. You need to change, amen? After that experience, I changed. I changed. I changed the way I was doing things. And the power of prayer didn't rest in me. The power of my prayer always rests in God. And just like the XO and my division of my department head, had decided what they were going to do with me, guess what? God has already decided what he's going to do with you. He's already decided what he's going to do with you. That's why Jesus tells us, he says, when you, before you even ask, how many, does your Bible say that? Before you even ask, your father knows what you have need of. Hallelujah. He already knows. But he still wants you to earnestly pray. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 says, men ought to always pray and not give up. And then he gives us a parable of how to pray and not give up. If you don't know how to pray and not give up, let me tell you how to do it. He gives a parable of a woman who goes before the judge and says, avenge me of my adversary. And the judge says, I'm not. I don't want to do it. I, it's not in my will. It's not my will to do it. He's, the judge says, I don't fear God and I don't fear man. I, don't, I do whatever I want to do. And she keeps on praying. She keeps on asking. She keeps on asking. She keeps on asking. You know, she keeps showing up. She keeps showing up and asking. Oh, there's that woman again today. 
You know, and it starts wearing the judge out. It starts wearing the judge down. The judge starts coming in the back door when it comes to work. I, don't, I ain't going to the front door because that woman going to be there. She's sitting out. She's always sitting outside. She's sitting right outside the front door of the of the steps of the uh, of, of the courthouse, waiting for me to come in. And then he stops coming in the front door. He starts coming in the side door. And you know what? You know what the woman gonna do? I'll tell you exactly what she's gonna do. Cause something my mother would have done. She'll go bake a pie, and she'll go get, go start talking to the judge's clerk. I bought you this pie. She'll start focusing on the judge. She'll start focusing on those that are around the judge. I bought you this pie. Check, see, see if you like it. See if you like the pie. Right. Oh, yeah, that pie was good. Could you tell me, I, the judge don't come in the front door no more. Where, where does he come in now? You know, I ain't supposed to tell you this. But he, he, comes in the back, he comes in the back door now. They know she's camping out at the back door. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Camping out at the back door. How do you know I come in this back door? Well, I just kind of thought maybe you maybe change something's wrong with you. You were sick or something. You don't want to be seen or something. And so he starts coming in the side door. And she go bake another pie. And she go, she go start talking to the security guards. The, 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 the federal police that, that, that monitors the building. What happened? The judge don't come in the back no more. Well, he, he, stopped, he don't come in till nine now. Because he said there's something that he's trying to avoid. I don't know what it is, but he just said somebody trying to avoid. He don't come in till now. Now she found out that nine, nine o'clock she's gonna be right there. And the judge says, "You know what? Let me go ahead and get this woman what she want, so I ain't got to see her no more." You know he didn't use a man for that. Jesus didn't use a man for that parable because we'll give up too quick. Because too much pride. We have too much pride. We'll give up. Okay, you don't like me. I don't like you either. That's the way we think. Like that's going to hurt me. I already didn't like you. And now I don't like you even more. And now you gave me reason not to like you. I really didn't have no reason before, but because you said you didn't like me, now I don't like you. That's the way we think. Amen? That's the way. So I knew to stay humble and pray because the only thing I was taught about God when I was growing up in church and in my family was, when you in trouble, Pray. <laughs> when you're in trouble, pray. I wasn't taught how to serve God in the good times. I was taught to serve God when all hell breaks loose. When you're in trouble, pray. And we would pray. And we would be, and I, and I was taught by my mother and my oldest brother, pray silently. I'd be walking down the street with my brother, and we know we both in trouble. And I said, What you thinking about? And he wouldn't be saying, just be quiet. He would just tell me, just be quiet. And I could see his lips over there mumbling. <laughs> Pray when we get home, mama, mama ain't going to be there. <laughs> we be praying. We would be praying. And my only thing my mother would always say, her fam famous words was, God will make a way. God will make a way. And how is he going to make a way? God will make a way. When we would be in trouble. I was taught to pray when I was in trouble. Amen? But God wants me to pray for the good, th good times also. Not out loud. That's what I was taught. I was taught that by the songs we sung in church. I was taught that through the songs we sang, how to pray in church, that God will make a way. I mean, not out loud, but God will make a way. Is that what you was taught? The songs, I, knew, I knew him through the songs. I knew God through the songs that we sang when I was, when I was going to church when I was little. I knew him through the lifestyles, and I knew, him, I, I knew him through my family's lifestyle. But I knew him, I knew God is a deliverer, and he, when you pray to him, he does deliver. I knew him through the songs, Jesus will make a way. Amen. Out of no way. And that song we used to say, he'll make a way out of no way. And that's the way we would pray. That's the only time we would pray when we was in trouble. But God wants you to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. I'm going to get ready to close here, amen. And I want to close with this. I want you to look at how Job knew God. How Job knew him. Think about that. Job knew God by the stories that he had heard. See, that's how I knew God. That's the way some of us know God is by the stories we heard, amen? By the stories he heard passed down through generations. Job lived during the time of Abraham, they say. Actually, Job lived right after, after the flood. A couple, th a couple hundred years, a couple centuries after the flood is when Job was Job living, when you read in the book of Job. And how close to the flood? So close that 
one of Job's friends, Elipaz, when Job was in trouble, when Job had lost everything, one of his friends, Elipaz, says to him and makes reference to the flood. He says, will you keep the old path in Job chapter 22? Will you keep the old path that the wicked have trod? They, carried, they were carried off before their time. Their foundations washed away by the flood. Job lived to be 200 years old. Think about that. Job's sons, Job's son, I mean Noah's son, Shem, was still living when Job was on the earth. So, and Shem lived to be 300 years old. Noah lived 300 years after the flood. See, so when Job was born, those guys were still on the earth. So, they, they, Job saw God as the great judge. As the great judge. Every, all, the world saw God. Think about this. Job, Job, the stories Job would have heard about God was the flood, the Tower of Babel, the, when the earth was departed, when the earth was split up, and the, and the continents were divided. Everything God, Job heard about God was God is a God of judgment. God is a God of judgment. And when you're reading in the book of Job, from chapter 6 all the way up to chapter 40, that's a bunch of chapters, isn't it? All the way up to ch chapter 40, Job and his three friends are discussing what, what God is like. Why Job is going through what he's going, why Job has lost everything. His family, all of his resources, he's lost everything. And they're discussing, why did this happen to you, Job? All those chapters, it's 42 chapters in the book of Job. They spent all that time discussing why it was going on, why Job's life was all tore up instead of somebody saying, let's pray and ask God why this is happening, Job. They could have, all that talking going on and all that debating. And if I was Job, I'd say, you know what? If we could just ask God, I wouldn't have to lay on this dung heap all this time. Not one, I'll tell you about Job's friends. Not one of them invited him home. Job, you're living on the dung heap. Come on, come, come on home with me. Not one of them invited him home. That's what I think. There's some, there's some rough friends he had in it. And when God speaks to Job, Job said, now, God says, now I'm going to tell you about me, Job. You think you know me. I'm going to tell you about me. You know, God talks to Job in only three chapters. In only three chapters, God explains himself to Job, who he really is. In three chapters. 42 chapters in the book, and only three chapters, God speaks to Job and says, this is who I am. And then Job says this, and I get this, I want you to get this. Job says, I heard of you, in chapter 42, Job says, I heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now I see you. <laughs> but now I see you, Lord. Now I see just who you are. Job responds. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things. How many of you know God can do all things? God can do all things. Hallelujah. I like Job where he says, I know that, thou, that you can do all things. Nothing can put a stop to your plans. I don't care what we're facing today. Nothing can put a stop to God's plan. Last week, last week we were talking about that scripture in Jeremiah 11. God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans of good and not evil so that you will have an expected end. And I told you last week, you got to read them next two uh, 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 verses also, chapter, verses 13 and 14. And he says, and then you will call upon me and you'll find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Tell somebody, you got to pray earnestly. You got to put your whole heart into this, amen? Let me finish reading Job's. He says, he says, who is this that hides words of wisdom without much meaning? Job's talking about himself and his three friends and all the other chapters, all those other uh, 38 chapters that they came up with who God is. He says, I have said things that I did not understand, things too great for me, which I did not know which I did not know. Amen? He says, hear now, and I will speak. I will ask you, Lord, and you will answer me. I have heard of you only by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. See, when you go through some troubled times, and you see God bring you out, you say, nah, I see God. Am I right, bro? I see God. I see, I see how God works, amen. I see what God can do. 
I see how powerful God is, amen. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now I see you. So I hate the things I have said, and I put dust and ashes on myself to show how sorry I am, amen. As with Job, God gives us a vision of who he is. And right now, through all that's going on, we may not like it, but he's given the whole world a vision of who he is. Stand to your feet as we get ready to close. He wants us to declare. Look at somebody say, declare it. He wants us to declare. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. See, that's what Elijah did on Mount Camel. Lord, show them that you are God and that you do hear me. And fire came down and consumed the sacrifice. Look what the Lord has done. I don't know about you, but right now we need to make sure that we know that there is power in prayer. How many of you know that there is still power in prayer? There is still power in prayer. There's still power in prayer. You know, uh, as we get ready to go into prayer, I, I, I appreciate Bishop and the Word. And, you know, always taking us back to the foundation of the Word. But be, because before any tittle or drop of it shall fail, heaven and earth will pass away. And so often we going by what we see and what we hear and, and even what we feel because we are human and those things seem real. And, and he always brings us back to the foundational truth of the word. And I want you to know that there is power in the word of God. And as I get ready to lead us into prayer, I have a question to ask you. You hear it, but how many of you all have experienced it seems like your prayer was not being answered. Anybody ever experienced that? Raise your hand and be honest. Only one person that's never had their prayer be seem like it's answered yet. Wow. So 99% of you all say that you've never experienced that. Oh, there's another one. Amen. Amen. There's another one that's honest. Like I, 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 I had some petitions before the Lord and it, it seemed like it had not come to pass. And I was thinking even this week as I was being challenged in prayers and petitions that I had before the Lord and seemed like the responses, it seemed like they were rejected. Not only did my prayers feel rejected, but I felt rejected. Anybody ever felt like that? I, 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 okay. I might be the only one. I, I might be the only one, but if you've never experienced it, I want to prepare you for when you walk in that place. And I felt rejected. But as Bishop say, there is power in prayer. And I want you to understand the power that you receive is not necessarily that he changes your situation, but he changes you. And the greatest thing that can ever happen is that your mind be changed, that your heart be changed, because that is what shall sustain you in spite of what you see, hear, feel, or experience. That is what causes you to overcome. That is what causes you to experience God in new ways. And so, as we get ready to prayer, I want you to know, in the midst of feeling rejected of my petitions, I went before the Lord in prayer. And he spoke to me and he said, Michelle, you are not being rejection, rejected. He said, the rejection is just my opportunity to redirect you to where I want you to be that you don't even know about yet yes. Yes. and he said so what I'm doing is I'm closing this door right here yes. because that's not the direction I want you to go yes. I'm redirecting you yes. to the path of righteousness to my promises that I have for you that you have not even been able to comprehend for my thoughts are higher than yours and my ways are greater than yours and you can't even comprehend the blessings that I have and I've already told you that my thoughts towards you are good and not of evil and I haven't expected in so that rejection that you're feeling is just redirection I, I want some of you all as we get ready to go into prayer I just want you to turn just, just turn to somebody and say, God redirecting you. God's come on, redirecting come on, come on. Tell God's somebody, tell somebody. God redirecting you. God's God redirecting just redirecting you. you. Yes. He's, just, he's just giving some redirection. Yes, hallelujah. 
Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you that there is power in prayer. We thank you, O oh God, that as we come to the throne of righteousness, knowing that you are God and you're still on the throne and that you make no mistakes, that you are a God that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or even begin to think about, that we can't even comprehend the greatness that you have. And God, even the circumstances and situations that seem overwhelmingly God and even negative at times and God as we come in prayer we recognize that your word has declared that you can take all things and make it work together for your good for them that love you and that are called according to your purpose and God we pray God that you will continually day reveal your purpose God hallelujah God we don't seek you just for selfish gain but we seek to gain understanding of your purpose in our lives oh God and God we pray God that you would fill us with your passion God and fill us with the desire for the things that pleases you father in the name of Jesus God and we pray today God that your people will be able to lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset them that they'll be able to run the race God and we cast down right now every imagination and every hard thing that exalt itself to just the knowledge of you and we bring it into captivity and obedience into your word we thank you God ha, release your anointing upon your people ha, release your power upon your people God give your word authority to the words that they speak God inspire your people God through prayer God strengthen your people through prayer God bring clarity and understanding through prayer God and most importantly God in prayer bring us closer to you God but my heart's desire God is to be closer to you Lord it's to know you in the pardon of my sins God it's to know you God in the midst of my heart in the midst of the disappointments God that I might know you hallelujah God we thank you God that you've given us an opportunity to come before you that you ripped the veil that we don't have to come between anybody else but we could come to you God and cast their care upon you knowing that you care for us we pray for our nation today God God, your word said, oh God, that if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, that you would heal from us and that you would heal our land. And we need a healing, God, in our country. We need a healing in this world. We need a healing in our nation. We need a healing in our bodies. We need a healing in our families. We need a healing in our schools. We need a healing in our communities. We need a healing in our government. We need a healing in our leaders. We need a healing within our pastor God God we call upon you God you said one could put a thousand to fight and two could put ten thousand we touch and agree right now God with your word in the name of Jesus and right now God we renew our confidence in you as we close this prayer God but you said to cast not away our confidence because it has great recompense or reward our confidence is not in man God our confidence is not in work of somebody I said but our confidence is in you that have started a good work will perform it until the end of time we renew our trust in your word we renew our trust and confidence that there is power in prayer it's in Jesus precious name and God we know that part of prayer is praising you so right now God which is our reasonable service we give you praise right now we give you praise give the Lord some praise in the name of Jesus we pray give the Lord some praise that's all right it's all right to give God praise thank you Lord let the redeemer of the Lord say so hallelujah 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 see when you begin to cry out from your inward man there's power that's being released and so right now some of you all just need to be able to shout hallelujah Aloha and thank you for joining us again today. We trust that the word of God has ministered to your heart, that you have been uplifted and encouraged. Well, we'd love to hear from you via the internet, Facebook, uh, YouTube, however you'd like to communicate with us. We'd love to hear from you and 
We'd love to know how the Lord is moving in your life. We're going to close our service today with prayer, trusting that your week will be a great week, that you will feel his presence, you will be revived and encouraged, and the word of God is going to come back to you in a powerful way. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And as all of our listeners are praying right now, we thank you that you are touching and moving in every situation. Lord, we thank you that there is nothing too hard for you, nothing impossible, and your word has been deposited on good ground, and it will bring forth great seed. We command any discouragement, depression, or anything that will try to attack the minds of those who are listening to go in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we can call on the name of the Lord, and we know that our prayer is answered. We know that our prayer is answered in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Again, again, give us a call, write us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to also have you join us. If you're here on the island, we'd love for you to stop by and just join us in worship, praise, and prayer. God bless you. Aloha. Mahalo for tuning in with Pacific Revival Center. If this message touched your spirit, make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our social media accounts to connect with our online family. If you're already a follower, share our content with your family and friends. And if you'd like to support the ministry, click Give Now below. Our mission is to train, equip, and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. And together, we can send the love of Christ to all corners of the world. We'll see you next week here at PRC, the place to be.